My wife Lisa and I and our two girls moved to Tampa in 2004. And uh, we started attending uh, New Hope uh, within about six months after us moving. Currently, I am on the, the finance committee, uh, as uh, been on there for about a year. Outside of that, uh, just part of the uh, second act Sunday school class. Both of our parents attended church. We both witnessed our parents in their giving, and uh, and it projected into our marriage. I think tithing is, is definitely very important in your spiritual walk. Um, it's it's a discipline that everyone needs to to really embrace. We go through times where uh, we have more time than money or we have more money than time. And I think God wants a little bit of, 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 of both. I got the opportunity a few years ago to, to, try to chair the capital campaign for the social hall. I actually had a conversation with Lisa about that we probably need to maybe get, not give quite as much to the church because of our finances. And she was the one, because she was paying bills she said, no, we, we'll continue giving. We'll figure out where else to cut. I think that strength of having a partner like that, to have Lisa tell that to me, shows what kind of dedication that she has, what she grew up with on tithing, and hopefully that's what we project. Tithing is just a, a spiritual discipline that, that I think you must have. Secondly, giving above and beyond is generosity that, that that you hope that that just when your walk with Christ that that's what you want to do the first step to giving is what you can give now can you give up a cup of coffee a week to to give to the church and I amazing what a habit will do and how it will grow into to a good spiritual discipline no different than getting into a habit of working out every day. You have to do it every day. You have to be habitual about it. And you have to take the first step. God will hold your hand and take the first step and he'll be with you the whole way. As Pastor Vicki has said, we're all in. Um, I think it needs to be a time of reflection of for everyone in the church to, de to determine um, how much they can give of their time, talent, and resources. That not only is it a financial decision, but it is a time decision because your most valuable and precious commodity you have is your time and the re talents that you have. God's given every one of us talents to use within the church, and we need to have everybody step up. I'm Bobbitt Jenkins, and you can count Lisa and I in. Thank you to Bobbitt and Lisa for that. Haven't these videos been awesome? I'm really good. If you've missed any of these videos, you can go online and watch them on the website because they are excellent. A huge thank you to Stuart, our technical arts director, who's put those together because there's something about listening to people's testimonies about being all in with Jesus, about giving, about um, their time. Uh, sacrificing their time to the work of God in this world. It's just so powerful. And I think this has been an amazing series. Um, this is the last week of the Count Me In series, which is all about getting all in with Jesus, going all in with Jesus. And so today we're celebrating with this combined worship service. And after this, I hope all of you will join us for lunch in the social hall, where we'll have just a time of celebration and fellowship. I hear the food is going to be delicious. I think it's pulled pork sandwiches and barbecue chicken. So you can't go wrong. Um, so please, everyone plan on, uh, after the worship service, just heading over to the social hall. We're going to say that our worship is continuing over there as we just engage in, in um, fellowship together. Um, so here's the question that we're going to start with. Who are you when no one is looking? Who are you when no one is looking? Are you the same person in public as you are behind closed doors? Are you a person of integrity? And why does that matter? Why does that matter? So as I mentioned, this is the last of our series in the Count Me In um, campaign that we've been doing, where we've been focusing on getting all in with Jesus. So. 
we've really been focusing on what it means to have undivided devotion to Jesus Christ. Submitting every area of our life over to him. And we've talked a lot about how the American church, not this church, but how the church with a capital C has settled, right? We've settled, we've settled for intellectual belief without true transformation, right? Intellectual assent to Jesus without true submission to Jesus Christ. Um, we haven't we know many times the church has, has said, intellectually said, yes, we believe that Jesus died for us and rose three days later, but we don't live like it. We don't live in the power of the spirit. We live in our own strengths and abilities. We function like we don't really need God. We've, we've been Christianity light and we've been okay with that. And for that reason, the rest of our culture hasn't been too impressed with what the church has to offer because honestly, we haven't been that impressive. And so we've talked about how we here at New Hope are on the threshold of something. And many of us can just feel it. We, can, we know that, that God has the ability and the power to do something really amazing here. But we have to partner with him in that, right? We have to recommit ourselves to being all in with Jesus, to recognizing the power that Jesus Christ has in this church and can have in this church, learning to have undivided devotion to the King of Kings. So we've ta been talking about submitting these different areas of our lives over to Jesus over the last um, five weeks. First, we started talking about why God's love matters, how it's God's love that compels us really to go all in with Jesus. That's the foundation. We've talked about why church matters, how that is God's design for his people, being part of a community of faith. The church is the bride of Christ, and Jesus died for her. We've talked about why serving and leadership matters, how we are not a whole, complete, effective body unless everybody is living into the gifts that the Holy Spirit has given us. We've talked about why giving matters. We did that last week. That was super uncomfortable, and yet, yet God like is working on us, right? As we, as we learn about, about why it's so important that we tithe. Um, but then there's this one other area, and this is what we're, we're kind of ending the series with. That's also really critical to talk about. It's so important that we submit our lifestyle, our behaviors, all of them, um, those that we show to the world and those that we have behind closed doors, that we submit all of that to Jesus as well. Because you see, how we behave matters. How we behave matters. What we say matters. How we live our lives, that matters. So you can have great doctrine, right? You can have great theology. You can say you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You can use super fancy religious words, but if you're not living a life of integrity, then basically you're kidding yourself, right? Integrity matters for believers. If we are all in with Jesus, then being honest and doing the right thing, doing the moral thing always matters. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, oh, we are so grateful that you are right here with us. We're grateful for this series. I'm grateful for this church. Lord, I pray that, that your spirit will just guide my words because it's not about me at all. So I pray that you just will speak through me
and that regardless of what I say, that each person here will walk away with what you want them to know, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who are worshiping with us online. We pray for those who are in-house. We pray for those who will watch this six months from now on our website, Lord, and we pray that your spirit will just make it be so. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I want to get right into our scripture for the, this morning. It's some of my favorite scripture from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. These are the words of Paul, and you can follow along on the screen. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone, the new is here. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So one of the things that I've consistently said to my children and teens and now young adults as they've gotten older, whenever they were leaving the house, especially when they started driving, as they were getting in the car to go to school, I'm always like, remember who and whose you are. Remember who and whose you are. And sometimes when I wanted to go a little bit deeper, I would ask them, so who are you and whose are you? Tell me. And they all are the same, you know, they kind of put their head down like, oh, mom, oh, mom, I'm God's and yours. And it's so important for me. I don't know how much they really, how deeply they thought about it, Um, but I just needed to know that they knew who they belong to, that, that they knew who they are. There's something powerful about being reminded who you are. So in today's scripture, Paul is reminding his audience who and whose they are. Basically, the church at Corinth is a total mess. It is a total mess. There's all this drama, you know, there's never drama in churches, right? There's all this drama, there's immorality, there's false teaching. There are actually people challenging Paul, saying what he's teaching is wrong. And Paul has gone to Corinth. He's tried to like resolve these issues, but he gets back to, I believe he was in Macedonia when he was writing this. And, and guess what? Same old stuff. So he sends them yet another letter. And that's what we call 2 Corinthians. And I love the first part of this scripture. Paul reminds them, you know, you are no longer the person you once were. You're no longer that person. If you are in Christ, then you are a new creation. You are a new person. The old has gone, the new has come. And that means when we say yes to Jesus Christ, our old sinful life is gone. We've been talking about that over the course of these last few weeks. Our old sinful life, it died up there on the cross with Jesus. We are born anew through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are born again. That's where that that phrase comes from. We are born again through the power of the Holy Spirit. We are remade in Jesus. We can be transformed people because of the spirit of living God within us. And this is possible. This is possible through the power of Jesus in us. It was Jesus who died for us and cleansed us with his blood. Amen? Amen. It was Jesus who made it possible for us to be reconciled with God, made right with God. It was was Jesus um, who, who justified us. And because of that, we are Christ's ambassadors. That's what Paul says. Because you have been made right with God, now you are Christ's ambassadors. In short, Paul is saying to these the very messy Corinthian church. He's saying, remember who you are. 
Remember who you are. You are no longer that messed up, lost person. You are someone new because of what Jesus did for you. Act like it. You have been made right with God. Act like it. The the Holy Spirit is within you. Act like it. You are an ambassador to Jesus. Act like it. So I want to stop for a second and think about this whole idea of being an ambassador. An ambassador. So an ambassador is someone who represents one country while living in another, right? And the United States currently has, I did a little research, this is your bit of trivia for today, 184 ambassadors to foreign nations and also to some international organizations. So if you think about it, these are people who are given authority to speak on our behalf, right? They're, they're given authority to speak on behalf of the United States to another country or organization. But they really walk a fine line. Ambassadors walk a fine line. They live in one country, but they represent another country. So they represent the message of a leader who isn't necessarily present, They also have to embody the character and follow the laws of their home country, even if they're located in a country that doesn't necessarily appreciate those laws. It can be a dangerous job at times. So as people who profess faith in Jesus, we are ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Paul says we have a new identity and we have a new task. If you think about it, we live in one nation, but we represent the kingdom of God. We live in the United States, but we represent the kingdom of God. And as changed people, our our primary role now is to represent God's message and to share his message with others. And as God's representative in the world, in a world that doesn't know him or honor him, our behavior and our speech, our intentions, those are all so critically important. Our integrity is critical. We're showing the world who and whose we are simply by how we do life. So I've always thought of integrity as who you are when no one is watching, right? That's kind of the typical um, definition that we're taught, who you are when no one is watching, and that's true, but I think it's more. It's also our character. It's, and includes being honest. Honesty is such an important part of integrity, but it also includes moral right living. John Maxwell, who's a famous writer and preacher, he says this, and you'll see this on the screen. Image is who people think we are. Integrity is who we really are. And there's a certain element of wholeness to this con- the concept of integrity. So it's you're the same whole person um, on the outside as you are behind closed doors. You're the same person Um, the, the image you show to the world, the person you are in the outside world is the same person you are behind closed doors. I really love this definition of integrity. Integrity is the unwavering determination in the heart to do right no matter what. Don't you love that? The unwavering determination in the heart to do right no matter what. It's the opposite of hypocrisy. It's not just talking the talk, but it's walking the walk. So our God is a God of integrity, right? He is a God who keeps his promises. If God says he's going to do something, he does it. He is faithful. He never goes back on his word. He can be trusted. He is holy. He is upright. Now, if you read through the Gospels, You'll find that Jesus demonstrated integrity in every single thing he did. In fact, Jesus embodied this concept of integrity, living out this perfect balance of truth and grace and demonstrating God's holy standard. Even when it was hard, 
even when it wasn't popular, even when it was painful, and led him to the cross. And so because of that, integrity is a central distinctive of what it means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Integrity, we could say, is a result of God's work in us. On our own, we're going to mess it up. But because of God's work in us, we have a chance to be conformed to the image of Christ, both internally and our behavior. So I've heard some leaders, even Christian leaders, say that character or integrity comes secondary to someone's policies or proposals. But I couldn't disagree more because I don't think the end always justifies the means, not, not as Christ followers. I mean, God is calling his people to a higher standard. God is calling his people to be radically different from the world around us. God is calling his people to a life characterized by holiness, a life that conforms to the ways of Jesus. So there are no shortcuts or excuses when it comes to integrity. Our behavior, our behavior always, always declares much more loudly who we really are and what we believe than beyond any doctrine we could profess. As ambassadors of Jesus, our behavior matters. Being people of integrity matters. And I'm sure we have all known people who failed in this area and did damage to the kingdom. Unfortunately, we probably could all name more than one person, right? There's certainly no shortage of public Christian leaders who have said one thing and then done another, who've fallen from grace pretty hard. And in every single one of those cases, and I'm not going to list the names because you know who they are, in every single one of those cases, people were hurt and the church and Christianity lost credibility. Damage was done. Why? Because the central distinctive of a person who follows Jesus is integrity. And when someone fails in that area, it does damage. Having integrity is about allowing God to work in us so that we can develop that unwavering determination to do what is right, no matter what. So here's the the question, the time for introspection. This is what everybody loves, right? So time to really go deep. Is there something? Is there something that you do or that you would do if you knew that no one would find out? Is there something you you would do if you knew that no one would ever find out? Or maybe there's something going on in your life right now. There's a, um, a behavior, a decision you're making, a pattern of speech, something that you know just isn't pleasing to God. It's not moral. It's not upright. Maybe it's damaging relationships. Maybe it's destroying your peace because you know it isn't right. That's called the Holy Spirit. That's called conviction. Maybe it's just taking a lot of your emotional energy um, because you you have to make so many excuses to yourself to, to convince yourself it's okay. And maybe it's damaging your witness for Jesus to other people, whether it's your family or your coworkers, whoever. Take a moment and think about that. We all have something. We all have something, including me. So I want us to think about this, integrity. Integrity means that we will do the right thing even if we could get away with the wrong thing because we wanna please God. It doesn't mean we're perfect, none of us are perfect. We are flawed, broken, sinful people. But remember, we're also new creations in Jesus. The spirit of the living God is in us. If you have said yes to Jesus, the spirit of the living God is in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in you. And that's powerful. 
And because of that, we want to do right by God. We acknowledge those sinful, broken places in our lives, and we have a genuine desire to work on them. There's nothing wrong with conviction. That's a good thing. We want to look more like Jesus. We want to demonstrate God's expansive love and grace to others and then have them take us seriously. Because if we're not people of integrity, then that so damages our witness to the world. No one's going to take us seriously. We're just another hypocritical Christian, right? So this is all about knowing who and whose we are. We belong to Jesus. We belong to Jesus and we are his representatives. Friends, this is serious. This is serious. This is not Christianity light. That was a bygone era. That is over with. You see, there is, now there is no higher calling than following Jesus. There is no higher calling than being an ambassador for Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter two, verse nine. But you are a chosen what? People. A royal, a holy, God special that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God wants to do a powerful work in and through you. God wants to do a powerful work through us as his body right here at New Hope. He wants you, he wants me, he has called you, he has called me to be an ambassador and how we do life. He has called new hope. We are, we are a group of ambassadors and there is no higher calling. And the question is, are you all in? Are you all in? Are you all in with Jesus? Can we count on you? Can Jesus count on you? Are you all in with your church attendance? Are you all in with attending worship regularly? Because there's no such thing as a solitary Christian. We need each other. I need you and you need me. This was God's design for his people to gather together and worship. So are you all in with your church attendance? Are you all in with serving and leadership? You've been given gifts. When you said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit gave you at least one spiritual gift and he, he intends for you to use it. And if you're not using it, well, my prayer is you have a bunch of holy discontent going on in you and you know that God has called you to do something else. God is calling you to live into who he created you to be. So are you all in with your serving and leadership? No excuses. I'm so busy. No excuses. Are you all in with your giving? Are you all in with giving your resources to God's work in this world? Remember everything we have, every little thing we have is a gift from God. And he calls us to give back to his work in this world through the tithe. It's just the way it is. And let me tell you, we, we talked about this last week. God promised to bless us if we tithe. And we promised you a money back guarantee. If you, if you give for six months to New Hope, if you tithe and you are not experiencing God's blessing in your life, then we will give that back to you. We'll, we'll give you your money back. That's how strongly we feel about it because this was a promise from God and we know God doesn't go back on his promises. He said, test me in this. Only time he ever said to test him. Don't normally test God, not a good idea. But in this case, we can do it. So are you all in with your giving? Are you all in with how you do life? Are you all in with how you do life? Are you living a life of integrity, a life worthy of his calling? Friends, there is no higher calling. There is no higher calling than following Jesus with every fiber of your being. Are you all in? Jesus is counting on you. New hope is counting on you. And the good thing is we get to count on him. Are you all in? 
Let's pray. Lord, we love you. What else can we say? We love you. You have just, you blow us away by your amazing love, by the way you care for us. And I get to see it over and over again, and I'm just so grateful. And I know, Lord, we are flawed, broken people, but we, <laughs> we are new creations in you. You have remade us. You have called us to something higher, something better, something with more purpose. And I pray, Lord, we will each respond. Help us, God. Reveal to us what's next. Lord Jesus, we are your church. We belong to you. We are yours. So Lord, I just pray that you do a mighty work here. I pray a blessing upon these people and upon this church, a special anointing. And we want to say, God, you are welcome here. Use us. Use us, Lord, for your work in this world. We will seek to live holy lives, lives of integrity, lives that make a difference for your kingdom. God, we are all in. We pray this in the mighty, 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 powerful name of Jesus Christ, the name above all names. Amen. Thank you.